Welcome to the online video series presented by Structure Studios. This video will explain the page layout stage. The page layout stage allows you to make the final changes to your project before printing. We can pick a paper size, set the scale for the project, and add details such as client information, plant legend, and images of our project. When we first access the page layout stage, the construction setup menu appears. Here we can set a default page size and scale. We'll choose 11 by 17 for our page size and 1 8 scale. When we press OK, the first page will use these settings. We'll see our design appear inside of a box on the main page. This box is called the 2D view and is one of several printable objects we can add to our page. Before we make our page, we'll discuss the basic controls found in this stage. At the bottom of our page is the Page Name tab. By default, this page is titled Main Page. When multiple pages are inserted, we can click the Page Name tab to move between pages and drag them to reorder them. We'll add another page shortly. To the right of the Page Name tab is the Configure button. Clicking on this gear icon will open the Construction Page Options window. At the top of the window is the page name. We can enter a new name by typing in this field. We'll keep this name as it is for now. Next, we have our page size, which we set to 11 by 17 in the Setup menu. We'll change our page size to 8.5 by 11 by selecting it from the drop-down list. You can also create a custom paper size by selecting it in the drop-down menu and typing in the measurements. We can also choose either a landscape or portrait paper orientation and whether the page will be printed with the page grid divisions. Finally, we have our margin sizes. These are the print margins set by your printer. We usually keep them set to the default numbers unless using a specialty printer. Once we're done making our page size changes, we'll press Save to close the Construction Page Options window. It's important to remember to keep the content on your page inside of the margins. The margins can be seen as a border around the page. Anything outside of the margins will not print. Make sure to move or size your construction objects so that they are all inside of the margins. Because we adjusted our page size, our 2D view is now larger than the full-sized page. We can adjust the size of our 2D view and any objects in construction with our Move tool. We'll left-click on the 2D view and see a gray border with resized boxes appear around it. We can click on any of these resized boxes to resize the 2D view on our page. If we click inside of the 2D view with our Move tool, the 2D view will move around the page. We'll move our 2D view and adjust the sides so that it fills the left two-thirds of our page. We can also rotate our view. With the Rotate tool, we can click and drag to print the plan at a different orientation. Using the angle snap makes this even easier. For now, we'll rotate back to the original position. Our project is now filling most of the page, but it's not centered in the 2D view. We can use the Page Layout Pan tool to adjust this. Under the block section in the panel menu on the right, we'll click on the Pan tool. Now when we left click inside of our 2D view, the design moves with our mouse, but the 2D view stays where we placed it. We'll move our view around until it fills the 2D view. We can also adjust the scale of the 2D view. If our project doesn't fit in the 2D view, we can use the Scale setting to adjust this. With the 2D view selected, we'll adjust the scale under the panel menu on the right. We'll adjust the scale until we can see the entire project in the 2D view. Next, we'll review all the ways to set a scale. We can click on the down arrow to the right of the Scale slider and choose from the list that appears. Or, we can turn on the Custom Scale toggle and enter a custom scale in the box below. Or we can have the software pick a scale for us. Click the Zoom Extents button to have the view scaled to contain the full project. For now, 
We'll set our scale so that our project fits inside our 2D view. The 2D view displays our design shapes, landscaping, and construction markup layers. With our 2D view selected, we'll click on the Object Settings button to make changes. Here, we can choose what appears in the view. A yellow square shows the 2D view will match hide and unhide settings from the previous stages. A red X shows that layer is hidden, even if visible in design. A green I shows all items on that layer are visible. These options allow us to hide or display content and control what appears on the 2D view and page layout. Using these controls, we can create plans that show specific content, such as only our house, pool, and triangulation or centerline for our dig plan. We also have options to add a title to the 2D view and font and alignment controls. We also have options to add a grid to our view, hide or display the GS image and fill patterns, adjust the symbol settings, as well as displaying the scale for the 2D view. Each 2D view can have a custom appearance with these settings. Let's keep our settings as is and press OK. There are other types of construction objects we can insert onto our page. We'll click on the Insert Object button in the panel menu to see our options. The first option is 2D View. This will insert another 2D view onto our page. We'll add another 2D view later in this video. The next option is 3D View, which works like an interactive 3D screenshot. We also see a number of legend types and finally image which allows us to load pictures on our page, such as our company logo or screenshots of our project. We'll add a logo and image later in this video. Next, we have the Pool Depth Profile option, available in Pool Studio and VIP 3D. We'll select this, turn on the title, and press OK to insert a new Pool Depth Profile onto our page. We'll move the Pool Depth to the top right third of the page. We can use the border around the Pool Depth Profile to resize it to fit on our page, inside of our margins, and next to our 2D view. There are several types of legends we can insert as well with VIP 3D and Vistera. We have the Plant Legend, Item Legend, which contains our accessories, a Line Style and Build Style Legend, and finally a Markup Symbol Legend which shows the symbols added to the page in construction markup. Let's add the plant legend to our project. We'll select it, and when we press OK, the legend setting window comes up. The legend allows you to automatically display a symbol legend listing library items inserted into your design. In the legend settings window, we see a list of all the plants added to our project. You choose which plants will appear or do not appear in the legend. We also have settings for headers and font, which will determine the size of the legend once inserted. Once we have these settings and categories we want, press OK. We'll insert this plant legend to the right side of the page. We can use the border around the plant legend to resize it to fit our page. Right below our pool depth profile, inside of our margins, and next to our 2D view. To make it easier to line up our content, we can turn on the page layout grid using the divisions menu. In the top middle of the screen, we can divide the page into even spaces. We'll want the smallest units, so we'll select 16. With the grid snap turned on, we can now adjust our page content while snapping to the division grid. This makes it easy to line up our plant legend and 2D view. We can save anything created in page layout as a template. For example, we can save a page template of all of our construction objects and insert it into each new project we work on. We'll first make sure that nothing is selected, then click on Save at the bottom of the library. When the Create New Template window appears, we'll see two options at the top. We can choose between Selected Objects and Page Layout. Because we want to save this as a page template, 
we'll make sure that page layout is checked. We'll choose the Pages category from the drop-down menu. We'll type in a custom type of basic training. We'll name the template 2D View and Legend and press OK to save it into the library. The template we created can now be inserted into any project. There are several existing templates in the construction library to get you started. Let's insert the 17 by 11 template and fill out the information. We'll select the Pages category and locate 17 by 11 and insert the basic template. We'll double click on the template to insert it. The new page template is now inserted. Our original page is still there too. We can click on the page tabs at the bottom to switch between the pages at any time or drag them to change the order. We'll start completing the details on our 17 by 11 page. We can customize each field as needed for our plan. On this page, our 2D view needs to be adjusted. We'll left click on the 2D view with the Move tool, then select the Pan tool. We'll leave some space between our 2D view and the text on the right. Then we'll adjust the view until our project is centered. We can also use the Scale slider to zoom in or out and set the scale, just as we did with our first page. We'll use Pan and Scale until our project appears correctly in the 2D view. Next, we'll edit the text on the template. With the Move tool selected, we can left-click on any text to select it and double left-click to start typing. For example, we want to rename Spillover Links to Spillover Count. Simply double-click and type in the new name. We can also add a background to our text boxes, just like we see with pool specs. Let's recreate a header. First, we'll select and delete it. Now we'll add another text box and make it the size of our original header. We'll name this Pool Specs. With our text box selected, we'll open the library and access Fill Patterns. We'll select the basic category and apply the solid fill. Now our header is black, so we'll need to change the text color to see it. Click the Color button next to Font under Object Styles and change our text to white. Lastly, we'll center the text in the box. Now we have a black header with a white text. You'll notice that several of the text blocks are split in two. This is a text on the left and then an empty area with the line below it. This is because these text blocks were made using the Label Text feature. With the text block selected, we can go to the Object Settings section in the panel to find the toggle for Label Text. When on, the text block is divided into two sides, one with the standard section of text and the right side, which is underlined. We can add text to both sides of the text block. For example, under the renamed Pull Specs text, we see sections such as Perimeter and Depth. We can double-click on the right side, where the underline appears, and enter text. We can edit the left side as well. Changing one side of the label text will not affect the other. We can fill in all of these fields, or we can let VIP3D do it for us using Smart Data. Exclusive to VIP3D, we can add automatic calculations from Smart Data to page layout. The Smart Data tab is found just below the library on the left. In VIP3D, we can view calculations on the Automatic Data tab. We could manually enter this data with the text tool, or we can add a Smart Data block and save a lot of time. First, we'll select the Pool Specs, Spa Specs, and Tile Specs text blocks with the Move tool. We'll left-click above and to the left of the text and drag our mouse to create a selection box. We'll press Delete to remove the text and add a Smart Data block in this section of the page. We'll click on Insert Object and select Smart Data Block, then press OK. Just like our 2D view in Legend, we see a list of what we can include in our Smart Data block. We'll check the box for pools 
and see our preview begin to fill itself in. We'll see options to adjust the title, headers, columns, and borders as well. We'll keep these as the default settings for now. The final option is the checkbox that you verify the data. It's required to check all calculations that are automatically generated. Make sure the items you've anticipated are part of each calculation. Make sure your shapes are drawn correctly and to scale. Ensure real numbers take into account overbreak, over-excavation, voids, rock displacement, settlement, and any other real-world challenges. When we're ready, press OK to add the Smart Data Block to the page. We'll click to place it just above our deck specs, leaving room above to add more content. If we need to make a change or format our Smart Block, we'll press Object Settings to make any needed changes. We'll adjust the borders of the Smart Data Block to fill in the area of the text we've removed. VIP 3D members can insert Smart Pages from the library as well. Under the Pages category, choose your paper size and insert the Smart Data version of the selected template. For more information about Smart Data calculations and Smart Data blocks, watch the Smart Data video on the Structure Studio's Help page. Next, we want to add a full-color view of the project. We'll select Image and select a screenshot from the project folder. We'll left-click to place it on the page and adjust its size as needed. The screenshot looks good, but we want to get a different view of the project. We can take another screenshot or add a 3D view. We'll delete our image, then click on Insert New Object and select 3D View. The 3D view is like an interactive screenshot of the 3D design. A menu will appear and we'll see a default view of the project, as well as any camera locations made in photo mode. Select the view and click OK to add it to the page. We'll place it on the top right of the page and use the border handles to resize it. We want to adjust the view, so we'll double click to adjust it. Use standard 3D controls to pan, rotate, zoom, and adjust the time of day. Press Escape or click Away to lock the view in place. Now we have a full color 3D view of our project on our page. Now is the perfect time to adjust our legend. We already created a legend on the first page, so let's copy it over. First, We'll return to our original page. With the legend selected, we'll copy it using Control plus C, or the Copy button at the top of the screen. Now, we'll return to the new page and paste our legend with Control plus V, or the Paste button. We'll position our legend to the right of our 2D view, above our pool depth profile. Now let's add our company logo to the page. This template has a block where we can double click to add an image. But let's review a few different techniques. We'll delete this block, then click on Insert New Object. We can quickly add any image to our page, just as we did with a screenshot. Or we can apply the logo added earlier in our design process. Once selected, if no logo was added earlier, you'll be asked to load it here. Simply select your image file. The logo appears on the page, but it's too large. We can use a scale tool and then left click and drag the mouse to reduce the image's size, or use the border around the image to resize it as well. Select the Move tool to move the image into place. We'll scale and move the image and place it in the bottom left of the page. Next, we'll add another object type, a text table. We'll select our client info text and move it to the left. Then select and delete the text blocks to the left of the pool depth profile. This is the perfect space for our text table. Click Insert Object and select the text table and click OK. We'll make it six rows tall and two columns wide. Turn off the box title 
and click OK to insert it. We'll place it to the left of our pool depth profile. Text tables are a quick way to add groups of text. We can simply double click to type into any box and adjust the font settings in the panel menu. We can also hold down Shift on the keyboard and select multiple cells in the table at once. When we do, we get options that include merging multiple cells and selecting the border of the selected cell so we can give them unique line styles. Next, we want to add another object to our page. We'll click on Insert Object button and select 2D View and choose to insert the new 2D View. We're asked if we want to load our markup types from the construction markup stage. In this example, we'll turn off the markup layers and press OK. Once placed, we can then use the borders to resize it to fit inside the area. We want this 2D view to be a close-up detail of our spa. With the 2D view selected, we'll use the Pan tool to move inside the view and the Scale slider to zoom in. We'll focus on our spa and then set the scale so it fits the 2D view. With our new 2D view in place, we want to indicate what this spa detail is showing. We can use our drawing tools to do this. In Page Layout, we can only draw on top of the paper. We cannot draw inside of our views. Anything drawn in this stage will not have a scale. So draw anything design related in previous stages, such as construction markup. To get started, we'll select our line tool. We'll start by drawing our line from the center of the spa in the large 2D view, then into our smaller 2D view. We want to end our line in the same way we started in our main view, so at the center of the spa. Because we're in the construction phase, we can end the line by left-clicking on the last point to end our line segment. We'll change the line style from the Line Style drop-down list. We'll select a bold dotted line to help it stand out. Now we can see a line connecting our main 2D view with our spa detail. If we move or adjust either of our 2D views, the line will stay where it was drawn on top of the paper. If you alter either 2D view, the line will also need to be adjusted. Lastly, we'll add a north arrow to our project, exclusive to VIP 3D. When we first started designing, in Stage 1, we set our orientation. We can add a north symbol that automatically matches the orientation set here. We'll click Insert New Object and select the north symbol and press OK. We'll see a menu with our default north arrows. We'll select our favorite and press OK. We can left-click to place it on our page and see it matches the orientation set in Stage 1. We're done with our work and we're ready to share it. In the main menu, we can choose Print. We'll see a preview of what will be printed. Use the Printer Setup menu to adjust your print settings, such as which printer to use and paper size. We can also export our pages to other formats. In the main menu, we'll see the Export submenu. We can export our page to popular formats such as a PDF file. All files will be saved into your projects folder for the current file for easy access. This concludes instruction on the page layout stage. For more information, please visit support.structurestudios.com email support at structurestudios.com or call 800-778-8996.